Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's September 29th, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and we have a very special guest joining us today, Dylan Chase, the Public Relations Manager for the Renewable Natural Gas Coalition. Thank you so much for joining me today, sir. Hi, Eric. Happy to be here. Really enjoy the podcast. I'm excited for a a fulsome and productive uh, discussion today, talking about the coalition and the uh, North American RNG market. Beautiful, beautiful. And for those few out there listening to this podcast who might not possibly be aware, uh, what is the RNG Coalition, the Renewable Natural Gas Coalition? Sure. So um, we are an advocacy group. We're an educational group and we provide leadership for the North American RNG industry. Uh, we advocate and educate for the sustainable development, deployment, and utilization of RNG, um, primarily with an eye on uh, you know the urgent problem posed by climate change. Um, and our goal, long term, is to make sure that RNG can support present and future generations. Um, you know, giving them access to domestic, uh, renewable, clean fuels and energy. Um, yep, yeah, we've been uh, in progress since 2011. Um, and we made great strides over that time um, and very excited about what the future holds for the North American RNG market. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, so what is, like, I, I know you just said what you guys are, but like, what's your mission and uh, like, how are you guys going about kind of achieving that in the modern era? Well, you know, I'm a public relations guy. So on my end, um, honestly, it's RNG 101, uh, you know, very often, um, right. you know, helping young people all the way up to people in university, the general public, um, journalists, you know, I have a media background myself, um, you know, helping them understand what RNG is, uh, you know, it's an incredibly diverse and articulated industry. Um, uh, it, it touches a lot of various industries. We get, you know, feedstocks from a number of different, uh, you know, sources of societal waste more often than not uh, you know it's just telling our story from you know our foundations and really uh, explaining the environmental benefits of rng um, beyond that um, you know we do provide policy advocacy um, we have a state policy team and a federal policy team um, those policy experts go to state governments, um, as well as Washington, D.C., and they inform policymakers and legislators about the ways that RNG can help decarbonize, um, you know, transport applications, as well as, you know, electricity markets um, in a number of different sectors. Very cool. Uh, in kind of the modern era, do you find that the concept of renewable natural gas, uh, like there's a high bar for understanding? Do people feel like at least from from their perspective, do people feel it's too complicated? And uh, how do you kind of go about you know broaching the subject and and breaking it down for people? Well, one challenge about understanding the RNG market here in North America, you know, as I touched on, is just the breadth of sectors that we touch. So you know, you're talking about the dairy industry, you're talking about emissions in the landfill sector, mm -hmm. you're talking about emissions from food waste, wastewater treatment. Um, and those are just the main sources where we draw uh, RNG from. Uh, predominantly around 72%, I believe, is our latest estimate of, uh, you know, RNG coming from landfills. Um, the other, uh, you know, main chunks are from around 17% come from landfills. And then I believe 6% is from food waste. 5% is from wastewater treatment. So, you know, to understand emissions in each of those sectors, you have to have a passing understanding of how each of those sectors work, existing regulations around those industry, um, as well as, you know, a passing understanding of how the overall energy system works and how the transportation market works here in North America. Um, so it's certainly a, a challenge, you know, for anyone engaged in the industry or touching on the industry the first time to understand, uh, you know, how different policies can affect you know, these various industries or, or, or support the growth of clean fuels. Um, but I, certainly that's something we've been successful in doing. Um, and, and the way that we've grown, uh, you know, RNG markets in North America through passing supportive policies, I think speaks to that. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, you know, expanding the RNG market in North America in this country, uh, we just apparently recently passed 300 concurrent R, uh, RNG projects. Is that correct? You are correct. Yeah, we are trying to ring the bell on that as much as we can. It's really incredible, um, you know, to give you a bit of a, a sense of the history uh, of the RNG market uh, here 
on our continent. Um, it, it, it's really crazy, frankly, to think that we're already at 300 facilities. Um, the first RNG facility in North America uh, was at the Fresh Kills landfill in New York uh, back in 1982. Um, and there's actually some great content on YouTube if you want to look up the Fresh Kills landfill and the history of that facility. Um, you know, community members were facing a lot of um, a lot of adverse impacts from that landfill in the early 80s, um, you know, odors and, and, and things of that nature. And that uh, landfill project was key towards, uh, you know, cleaning up the air around that landfill project, um, you know, in the way that RNG facilities can. Uh, from there, uh, you know, just one project was online in the early 80s. And when we were founded, RNG Coalition in 2011, there were around 31 facilities, I believe. So in around 30 years, we had just 30 facilities come online from the inaugural facility in New York. So, you know, growth was really petering along, you might say. Um, and, you know, we're proud about the role that we've had in helping advocate for policies that have led to the kind of growth we've seen since 2011, going from around 30 facilities to now 300 today. Uh, there aren't that many industries, renewable or otherwise, that you're going to find that have achieved 10x growth over that time frame. Well, in addition to, you know, the RNG Coalition's own efforts, are there any specific things that you can point to that you feel really had an impact on this explosive growth the industry has seen over the past decade plus? Sure. Um, a lot of it, you know, it, it comes down to policies um, that can help provide the necessary supports and incentives for, you know, companies to make the necessary investments in RNG facilities or, or you know, maybe transitioning a trucking fleet towards using RNG. Um, obviously, the low carbon fuel standard in California is just one example of a program that's been very key towards supporting use of RNG um, in the autom uh, transportation sector. Um, I think at last check, around 97% of natural gas vehicles in California are run with RNG. And that's in large part because of the LCFS. Um, additionally, if you're looking federally, obviously the renewable fuel standard similarly has really supported growth of RNG in transportation markets. Um, and again, you know, ringing the bell on a big win for our industry recently. Um, for those of your listeners familiar with the renewable fuel standard, uh, which is the federal program that mandates uh, use of clean fuels as part of the U.S. transportation supply. Uh, we were very successful in our latest round of engagement with EPA, which administers that program. Um, and EPA is factoring a 25% growth rate for each year uh, for RNG uh, from 2023 to 2025 under that program. And that's in large part because of you know our engagement and the successful engagement of many of our members. So um, policies like that ultimately send a signal that um, it's safe to invest in growing uh, industries such as RNG. Well, and for those who may not, you know, uh, immediately recognize numbers like 25% growth for for large industries, that that's kind of a ridiculous number, a ridiculous amount of growth year in and year out. So congratulations on helping influence that. I, what else, uh, what, what else? specifically about the, the growth of the RNG market, do you think it's really important for people to understand? Well, again, you know, it's not just, um, one of the great things about RNG is its flexibility, like natural gas, because, you know, RNG and natural gas are totally fungible with one another. Uh, you know, RNG has great advantages in terms of the flexibility of applications you can use it for. So, you know, you can put it in a natural gas vehicle, sure, but you also can use it anywhere else. You can use natural gas. So, you know, you think about, um, power, you think about thermal applications or, you know, heat, we might call it more colloquially. Um, those also offer a huge opportunity. And I think that that's reflected beyond the transportation market um, in other policies we've advocated for uh, in terms of renewable gas standards. So these are, uh, you know, legislation that uh, it mandates or imposes a certain requirement of renewable gas that needs to be blended uh, into, you know, the utility gas system. Um, some examples I could point to, California, uh, and honestly, so often it comes back to California leading the way yeah. um, on climate policy. Um, you know, I believe it's 12.2% RNG by 2030 they're shooting for. Colorado also has a renewable gas standard um, requiring gas utilities to reduce GHG emissions by 4% by 2025 and 22% by 2030. Um, so programs like that open up yet another pathway 
um, for us to decarbonize the overall gas system beyond just you know what we're putting in heavy duty transport. Um, and then beyond that, uh, voluntary, um, voluntary markets, you know, beyond what's mandated policy wise, um, I think the voluntary market really is going to create a huge avenue for growth for our industry. Um, and maybe maybe the phrase voluntary market isn't too familiar for uh, all of your listeners. Um, but the idea being, you know, you have policy that mandates use of different renewables or clean fuels. And then you also have companies or stakeholders who might voluntarily step up. Uh, you know, recognize the urgency of the climate problem and their contribution to it with their industrial emissions um, and voluntarily, you know, uh, committing to procuring RNG uh, as part of their decarbonization strategy. Well, there's also, frankly, a lot of money to be made uh, in that industry, especially with, uh, you know, a lot of the landfills that aren't currently creating renewable natural gas, being able to pipe that, being able to provide utility grade gas. Uh, I, I think a lot of people would be surprised how much of a potential gold mine uh, is out there. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Eric. Um, you know, the thing that I often try and, uh, you know, emphasize to people is the the double emissions reduction benefit around RNG. So you have the emissions reductions that are, you know, being captured or uh, taking place at, let's say, a dairy project. And then you also have the emissions reductions that are taking place further downstream when you talk about displacing fossil fuels. Um, you know, so for, for companies that can turn an economic liability, their emissions into an economic support, obviously that makes a lot of sense. And I think that's why you've seen so much interest in RNG in recent years. And I did want to ask about uh, this smart endowment that uh, the RNG coalition has going on. I was interested in, in learning about that. Absolutely. So the, the smart initiative is our plan to capture and control methane at 43,000 aggregated organic waste sites in North America by 2050, uh, with some benchmarks also in place for 2025, 2030, and 2040. Um, you know, and if, I, I guess I can give credit to, you know, the, the guys who founded the coalition, uh, Johannes Escudero and David Cox. Um, you know, I spoke earlier about the kind of uh, meteoric growth of RNG in North America, uh, you know, partly through their engagement from one facility in the early 1980s to 30 in 2011, and now already at 300. And by the way, we've got another nearly 500 projects in the pipeline and some stage of planning or construction. Um, you know, honestly, they've been visionaries in terms of, uh, you know, targeting that growth and pushing industry members to reach for that growth. And I think SMART is another example of that. Um, it may sound like a lofty goal to some, um, but you have to, you know, reach high to get high, um, certainly. And, and, and I think that SMART came out of partly uh, where we were in the pandemic, um, trying to chart a new course for the industry to, uh, again, reach high and maybe su surprise some people who might be skeptical about, uh, you know, just how much societal waste is out there that can, um, be captured and converted into a clean fuel. Well, with as much as the industry has already grown over the past decade plus, uh, do you honestly see that trend continuing or uh, do you think it's possible for RNG to plateau or is it just so interesting of an option now for people that we're going to continue to see renewable natural gas on an upslide for years to come. What do you think? Well, it's a fair question. And, you know, I pointed out there, there are skeptics out there who, you know, challenge our growth. Um, and again, what I usually ask people is, you know, where were those skeptics back in 2011 when there were 30 facilities? Did they see us getting to 300? Uh, it's, it's doubtful, right? Um, and when you consider a lot of the win-wins that RNG proposes from taking, you know, this emissions liability and turning it into economic opportunity, mm -hmm. um, when you consider a lot of the voluntary decarbonization targets that, you know, um, different industrial uh, corporations have set and the really, what are the really viable pathways for them to get to their 2030 and beyond targets? RNG makes a lot of sense as a close at hand, no regret solution for them to invest into. Um, you know, in terms of latest projections, obviously we don't offer specific projections. Um, you know, ICF, uh, Boston Consulting Group, Woodmac have all uh, recently issued 
uh, uh, growth projections for RNG in U.S. and North America to 2040, 2050. I'd encourage people to look into those if they're wondering where the industry is going. Um, uh, all of those reports I just referenced uh, forecast uh, continued huge growth potential in RNG. Now, looking at things from another perspective, policy is going to continue to be very important, right? Um, I mentioned there's 500 projects or so, I, I think 481 to be exact, currently either under construction or in some stage of planning. Um, and I'll tell you, you know, I came to the coalition after being an energy journalist previously. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when it came to projects that are under planning, you know, um, <laughs> editors I would work for certainly would be, uh, you know, careful about how those be, would be framed when you're writing about a company's plans, because not every plan project comes to fruition. What are some of those projects that are being mapped out, potentially hinging on? Well, obviously, uh, you know, they might be looking at, are, is there policies that are going to make this economically viable, um, that are going to help us uh, withstand any volatility, commodity volatility that's involved in, in, in making this project viable? Um, and that's why we're here. We try to provide the leadership and advocacy expertise, um, for instance, to keep the LCFS heading in the direction that it should be to be, continue to be engaged with the EPA, um, making sure that the RFS is, you know, uh, implemented in the way that Congress uh, intended in the mid 2000s when it uh, drew up RFS. And that, um, you know, state level governments also have the information they need to create climate smart policies that um, support RNG. We're gonna have, um, we're gonna have again, our skeptics, I don't wanna say our opponents, um, because I think that some people who are questioning RNG these days, you know, might come from the environmental realm. Um, I certainly don't see those stakeholders as opponents. Um, I think that some people who question RNG, it's it's more again about not fully understanding the full life cycle benefits of RNG, um, and, and maybe not understanding just how uh, intensely we we care about climate change in our group and in our industry. And I think in time through continued educational efforts and engagement, we're going to win over, uh, you know, even a lot of the skeptics. Um, as if, if we are, if we, if our aim is true in hitting the kind of benchmarks that we have set, for instance, under the SMART initiative, and if our members are successful in getting these projects online, uh, when we can demonstrate the kind of emissions reduction benefits that we're going to achieve, I think even a lot of those skeptics over time um, are going to have to turn their attention to far more urgent problems um, presented by climate change. Yeah, well, I certainly uh, anticipate, given the numbers, given the stats, given the recent history, it wouldn't surprise me at all if it continues at even greater than a 25% growth over the next few years. And as far as the RNG coalition goes, do you guys have anything specifically in the future that you're excited about? Well, and everywhere I look, honestly, Eric, everywhere I look, and I'm I'm the the public relations, media relations guy for the coalition. So, media monitoring is a, a part of my daily daily mandate. Um, and we have a couple of great newsletters, including our RNG News Weekly. I would encourage anyone to visit our website um, and sign up for where we compile, uh, you know, all news items relevant to RNG or renewable gas. Um, in North America and beyond. Um, but as part of my daily media monitoring, I'll tell you, uh, not a day goes by, I don't see a story that I view as a, you know, an encouraging signal that our mission is on track and that we're, we're making real change happen. Um, just recently, I know Maine got its first dairy RNG project online um, through Summit Utilities um, in North Carolina, even saw one of our members uh, it recently commissioned North Carolina's first two landfill gas RNG production facilities. Uh, in Fortis, BC, over in British Columbia, um, a lot of exciting things happening in Canada as well. They just announced their, their largest RNG project to date um, in partnership with the city of Vancouver, I believe. Um, and, and that's just kind of a sundry list, um, kind of cherry picked. I really could look at any of our members and probably find something they're progressing on that's exciting. Um, even across the Atlantic, um, you know, you have to look at what Europe's doing is very excited too. That's part of the educational effort for me is um, you know, highlighting that RNG isn't a newfangled thing that you know, um, we just cooked up here in North America. Europe also recognizes the climate benefits of RNG as part of a decarbonization strategy. Um, I believe they're shooting for a 12-fold increase in, bio, they call it biomethane, uh, supplied by 2030 as part of their plan 
to wean off Russian oil and gas and, and really transform their energy system. So uh, it's a global movement. It's all across the US, it's in Canada, it's across the Atlantic. Um, and, and really I would be cherry picking if I just focus on any one thing as an exciting sign of our progress. Nice. Well, certainly a ton of reasons to follow RNG, the incredible growth of this market and a growth that certainly looks like it's trending to continue. But for the Renewable Natural Gas Coalition, you mentioned the website already. How can people find you guys and follow what you're doing specifically? What is the website? Thank you very much, Eric. Uh, it's rngcoalition.com. I'd also encourage uh, all of our listeners today to check us out on LinkedIn, um, Facebook, and oh, I almost said Twitter, uh, but X. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get into the habit of that. Um, uh, Instagram as well. So, uh, yeah, we are uh, we're all over the internet. Come find us. Um, learn about our mission. Um, we have a whole uh, section on our website dedicated just to education. Um, where we have infographics, data, different questions people have about um, RNG. We are, I'll tell you, one of the most open-handed trade or industry or advocacy groups you're going to find. Um, you know, we try and provide a lot of data and information about our industry to help people learn about RNG um, and the decarbonization benefits it offers. So I'd really encourage everyone to please visit us at rngcoalition.com. Awesome. Incredibly interesting. Cannot wait to see what happens with this industry moving forward. Uh, Dylan, thank you so much for joining me today again. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Dylan Chase from the Renewable Natural Gas Coalition. Thank you very much, Eric. It's been a pleasure. Awesome. And thank you guys for listening to the September 29th issue of Recyclist. My name is Eric Provost. Uh, Recyclist, of course, brought to you by Diamond Scientific. Thank you, and we will see you next week.